Uh, two days ago, I was in uh, London in the event Unleash the Power Within. It's the event with uh, Tony Robbins. Anybody here knows Tony Robbins? I want to share the best insights I got from my second year crewing for Tony Robbins. That was a dream that I had for a long time. I'm going to start telling one story. I was in the event, and then there was, I was working in the, you know, giving high fives. You saw a lot of people giving high fives, a lot of energy. And then I was giving a lot of high fives to persons. And then I saw one person that was a little bit lost. But I don't know, my intuition, something told me, this girl, she looks Brazilian. And then my intuition said, go there and talk to her. I saw she was a little bit lost looking for, for chairs because it was 13,000 people in the event. And then I went there and I said, do you need help? And then she said, yes, yes, she could not speak English. And then I said, she said, yes, yes, a little bit. But I said, I felt in her accent, are you Brazilian? She said, yes, I'm Brazilian. And then we start speaking Portuguese. And then she's like, oh, God, the universe, or whatever, send you here to talk to me. And then she started talking to her. She said, please take me to the front seat, the prime seats there, like the front in front of the Tony, Tony Robbins stage. Please, I have a friend that's there. I need to give this here that's in my hand to her. And then I thought, mm, she's trying to, you know, like sometimes Brazilian style has this style to trick and blah, blah, blah. She's Brazilian. She's trying to trick me to go to the front and sit there. But I said, you know, I was so happy that she was Brazilian. I said, okay, I'm going to do that for you. And then I took her to the front. And then I, you know, I, I, said, I said, let's see if she's going to come back. Because she could just sit there and, you know. And then she came back. You know, she came back and then she started talking to me. Thanks a lot, thanks a lot, thanks a lot for your help. I need your help. I need more of your help. And then she said, you know, uh, I'm going to be, I have a, a dream to take Anthony Robbins to Brazil. And I was like, shit. And she, 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 she brought, she took like a paper. This is the project I'm going to pitch today to try to take Anthony Robbins to Brazil. And I was like, how is she going to do this? She can't speak English. You know, and then she said, I need your help to translate the conversation. And then I said, okay, get my Facebook and write me, you know what I mean? And then she got my Facebook and then I went to crew. I was working and then she sent a message, Ding. and then I said, please come now. They accept me to go in to a meeting now in the room. And then I went to the room. When I came to the room, she was already there talking with this guy that I showed the picture, this this job. He's the owner of Success Resources, you know. Uh, and then she was already there talking to the guy without speaking English. She was around, and they both were laughing. And I was like, shit, what's happening? She doesn't speak English. And they were communicating. And the guy was like, ha, 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 smiling. And I was like, she doesn't need me. And then she said, please sit here and please help in the translation, in the negotiation. And then I was sitting in the middle. She was here, and Richard was here. And you know, then she really needed help because they were talking about money. You know, they were take Tony Robbins to Brazil for the first time. And then I was in the middle of the negotiation. She could not speak English. She couldn't speak, you know, hello, I want uh, beer, or my name is uh, El Elani. It was her name. She could, but she was expressing so well that in the end, the negotiation happened. OK? And now, Tony Robbins is going to Brazil for the first time in the history. And then, why I'm telling you this story? Do you think this woman, you don't know her? You never saw her? Do you think she had energy? Do you think she had focus? Do you think she could you know, be the owner of her emotions, be the owner of her patrons, you know, mind patrons? I think so. Uh, do you think she had a low standard, a medium standard, or a high standard? High standard. Do you think she had certainty? Yes, she had a lot of certainty, you know. She was like, that's her for me. And why I'm talking about this? Because if we, you know, want to achieve our dreams, that's what I got from her and from this experience in Anthony Robbins, you know. Everything that he was talking about, I saw on her. 
in a, in, a, in a human being, in a simple human, that was expressing that in a natural way. And that could be us also. And that need to be us also, as I told you in the beginning. If you want to be an outsider, what means an outsider? To be an outsider is to live the life the way you want. It's not the way I want or Tony Robbins wants. It's the way you think that, shit, my life would be amazing if it was like that. Not as nobody's telling how to be, how you decide how to be. That's to be an outsider for me. And to be an outsider, you need to have energy. If you have no energy, if you don't know how to access your own energy, how are you going to create tempo, you know, how much more energy you have, you take better decisions. And to achieve your goals, if you want to sell uh, your product that you want to sell, do you think you're going to take better decisions if you have a lot of energy, if you have low energy? What do you think? When you have a client, that, when you have a prospect that you have to go there and try to sell something, what's the difference when you have low energy and you have high energy? What do you think? High energy. What's the difference? What, what, what's the result if you have high energy when you're calling somebody to try to... High energy, when I mean high energy, doesn't mean you need to be extrovert. You know what I'm saying? It's not about being extrovert. I like to talk like this. But this is my uniqueness. You have to find your uniqueness. As you said, introvert, do you think his Latin was here, his name was here. In the, he was an introvert, but do you think he has energy? He applied his own energy in a way that makes him take better decisions to take to the place he wants to go. So high energy. Find you know, your own button of energy. Because when you have more energy, you take better decisions. Okay. So that was one thing I got from, from Tony. Another thing, focus. I asked her, do you think she had focus? Yes. Why? Focus equals feeling. If, do you think if she was focusing in, I, I can't speak English. I can't, sp wh what would be her outcome if she, if she was focused? I can't speak English. What do you think, she, how do you think she would feel? So if, if she was focusing on, I can't speak English, I can't speak English, they may be not going to make a deal with me because I can't speak English. What behavior she would take? She would probably not take the action to do what she wants to do. So focus equals feeling. So if you have high energy and if you focus on good things, what your outcome is going to be? Probably a lot better if you have low energy and you're focused on your bad side on what you can do. You see, it's two different roads. So that was the second thing. Uh, uh, energy, focus, and patterns. And I, I ask you, you know, you can't change what you're not aware of. In this area of personal development, there is a lot of persons that doesn't have a clue about how they administrate their own emotions. People are like, Maybe some of you here, I'm talking to you, you're like, what the fuck this guy's talking about? You know, maybe. Because you have no clue, you can't change what you're not aware of. It's like if somebody's talking to me about something, I have no clue, how can I change? You know, I'm not aware. So it's good. It's already, you know, yeah, no, I don't agree with anything because I'm not aware. This was a learning for me when I could not ad administrate my own emotions. I didn't, I didn't know I even could administrate my own emotion and lead my emotion because I was not aware that my emotion was controlling me and not me controlling my emotions. Okay? So if I ask you here about patterns, what I mean with patterns? Patterns are the habits we have. Do you focus more in what you have or do you focus more in what's missing in your life? So what's the result of you focusing more on what you're missing. I'm talking about this, if you go inside of yourself and say, uh, uh, do you focus more on what you can control? Do you think people, what do you think people focus more? On what they can control or what they can't control? It's mostly, focus on what we can't control. Mostly, and that give us which kind of feeling. When we focus on what we can't control, what kind of feeling we get? It, sometimes a person is depressed, and they are not aware of that. You know, they just assume I'm depressed. 
And then you start talking to the person, and then you, and then you start coaching her, like, but do you, you know, with questions, coach, we coach, we work with questions. So if a person is depressed and they have no awareness of the emotion, they're just going to say to themselves, I'm depressed. Put loot. I'm depressed. And then, of course, that is the media helping them. They, even their family are helping them, telling, yeah, you are really depressed. I can see that you're depressed. You know, take medicine. But if you change the thought, if you change the question, but why are you depressed? Uh, maybe you're focusing on what you can control. You know, maybe you're focusing on what's missing. Oh, I don't have me, me. There was a time in my life I was focusing on what I can't have. I could not speak any Swedish, and I was focusing on that. See, that's missing. I can't succeed in Sweden anyway because I'm focusing on what I don't have. Then I start to focus on what I have. I said, shit, I'm really intelligent to have energy. You know, I can't study. The school is gratis. So I start to focus in, you know, on that. So my life starts to change. So when we, we, in our own lives, you know, start to understand that, where we focus. Do you focus more on the past? Or do you focus more in the future? Oh, in the future. But we are always, you know, I'm going to be, ah, uh, you know, we forget now, this moment, that the only time we have future, maybe, we, I don't know, maybe we die when we go out. No, not you, <laughs> me. <laughs> You're not going to die. <laughs> damn, damn, damn. <laughs> levels, when I talk about levels, you know, nowadays, it's not enough, even for you Swedish, that has a, a, a logon society, that is changing. You know, internet's here. You can't be logo anymore like maybe 20 years ago. Or you are out of the game, of the logo of just being, OK, yeah, you know, it's cool. It's good. But it's not the way you want. I'm not talking about, I agree with you. I'm talking about healthy in that level. I'm talking more about, you know that if you are regular nowadays, what do you get nowadays if you're regular? What, what kind of results? If you're a regular person, if, if you are a regular mom, that you are, you are regular. Regular is here, in the middle, OK? If you're a regular mom, the results you get nowadays are low, poor, OK? You're going to get poor results. That's kind of the balance of life, you know? If you're regular in something, you're going to get poor results, you know? If you are good nowadays, you're going to get regular results in your life. If you are nowadays with the competition and with the speed of the learning, if you are a good lover, you're going to lose your man, you know? Or, you, <laughs> or you're going to lose your women. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because you are just good, that means you are regular, you know? It's like, ah, ah, OK. I mean, if you are. Uh, if you make home pages and you're just good nowadays, there is a guy in China or there is a guy in Japan seated working, they're gonna beat you because you're just good, you know. Nowadays, it's faster, you know, internet. So we need to become more than good. We need to become excellent. And excellent, your results gonna be good. Yeah? So as 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 we see. The outsider mindset, you don't think even excellent. You think outstanding. You think higher, outstanding, so you go and become excellent. You know? And to be an outsider, as I told you in the beginning, what's to be an outsider? It's you live the life you want to live. You know? It's, if I ask you, everybody here, how many of you here live the life you are choosing exactly? Yeah. How many of you here are living like, OK, I'm choosing everything right now. My job, I'm choosing my uh, relationships, life. I'm choosing my, my, my salary. How many of you are choosing 100% of your life? <laughs> yeah, OK. OK, that's amazing. It was maybe from 23, if you, tell, if you told the truth. Yeah, because many persons don't tell the truth. That means that, you know, to live the life 
in your own terms the way you want, you need to be playing the two millimeters rule. That's like the two millimeters rule is the rule that, you know, if, if, you, if you see the, in the Olympics, the third, you know, to go to the Olympics, you only can be outstanding, right? If you go to the Olympics, you can be good. The good runners don't go to the Olympics. They don't get a place. You know, the excellent runners, they don't get a place. Only the outstanding go even to get a chance to go to the Olympics or, you know, to another kind of competition top level, right? But in the competition, if a person gets third place, what they get? What they get in the competition, Olympics competition? Bronze medal. Bronze medal. And then after one day, everybody forgot him, right? Third, maybe, maybe his mom going to remember him, right? And his girlfriend going to, oh, you are at the Duke, Mika. But the general will, will forget him. The second place, we get a little bit more awards or attention. And the first one, that maybe one for two millimeters, he will get everything. And that's what I'm talking about. It's not about, I'm not talking about, oh, I'm here to pressure and you have to be more and more. No, everything depends on your own terms, as you said. As you said now, yeah, I'm, but I can be good, but this good is this two millimeters of effort that we have to put on our own stories. You know, like, uh, uh, like creating, maybe, if, maybe you did a speech here today, right? Maybe, you, what do you do if you put two millimeters more in this speech that you did today? I would just change so many things. Now I know. No, no, even that was amazing. But if you put two millimeters more, what will happen? It will be even more amazing, right? So it, that's what, what I'm talking about. Level of your standard, always. That will make you more happy in your own life because you'll be gonna getting closer to your own dream. Certainty. I ask, do you think that girl, the Brazilian girl, she had certainty? Total certainty. Certainty is power, you know? Certainty is power. If, you were, if I come here in front of you now, if, and I have no certainty of what I'm talking about, maybe, maybe you don't like what I'm talking about, but I don't really care about that. If I come here with uncertainty to try to, to, to talk to you about something that I believe, that's going to be really hard to, to make you listen even one thing that I'm saying. So certainty is power. She had a lot of certainty. I, I, you know, I got amazed at how much certainty she had. Without speaking English, take Tony Robbins to Brazil. That's crazy, brother. I came like talking this story to everybody. I said, I met a woman. She was amazing. She had energy. She had Certainty, she had focus, she had a high standard to make things happen. And uh, uh, to finalize right now, I would like you to test one thing between you about certainty, okay? I, I want to see the difference in the energy of the room, yeah? Okay, 30 seconds, yeah, certainty, high energy, certainty.